This video is sponsored by PCV Gogo. Hi everyone, welcome to How to Electronics. In this project, we will build an IoT solar panel monitoring system using ESP8266 and some current voltage and temperature sensors. For the demo purpose, I will be using a 20 volt solar panel for this project. To monitor the solar panel data online, we will be using an IoT platform called UV Dots. The solar panel parameters like solar voltage, current, power, energy consumption and temperature can be visually and graphically analyzed on the UV Dots dashboard. I designed this custom PCB board for this project that can measure voltage up to 36 volt and current up to 30 ampere. To understand this project, you need to go through the schematic as well as PCB. The code is also well written and well defined which you can easily understand. So let's dive deep and check out how we can build this complete system. Welcome back again. The components used in this project are mostly SMD components. We have updated the bill of materials on our website. It has all the components listed along with the part number. Let's take a look at the current sensor used in this project. We need a system that can measure more voltage and current. The INA226 is the best alternative considering the cost and accuracy. We can measure the voltage up to 36 volt and current up to 30 ampere. For the temperature sensor part, we are using a DS18B20 waterproof temperature sensor. The temperature sensor is used so that the temperature of the solar panel can be measured. Let's take a look at the design part now. The input voltage source which could be from 7 volt to 36 volt is fed to the 7805 voltage regulator IC. Use a proper heatsink for 7805 in case you are using a voltage above 12 volt. The switch SW1 will turn on off the system. The voltage from 7805 is fed to the 3.3 volt voltage regulator IC SD7333. The 3 volt is fed to the ESP8266 and the current sensor module. The ESP8266 circuit has an automatic programmer circuit handled by these transistors Q1 and Q2 and some registers capacitors. You don't need to press any push buttons which upload the code. To upload the code, you need to use these header pins and connect an FTTI module. The INA226 sensor is connected to the I2C pins of ESP8266. An extra I2C pin is provided here so that you can connect a 0.96 inches I2C OLED display. To draw this schematic, I used EasyDS software. Then I converted the schematic to a custom PCB. All the components are perfectly placed and are easy to assemble at home. This is the 3D view of this project. I have added the cover file for this in the website article. You can download it from there. It is time to order the PCB. So I visited PCB Gogo, which is the official sponsor of this video as well. You can get your trial PCB for only $1 here. I uploaded the cover file and filled in the details like material types, dimensions, quantity, thickness, solder mass color, and all other required parameters. And then I clicked on a quote now. Here you see the price has gone to $0. You just need to pay shipping charges. Now add to the cart and place order. Now after 5 days, I received this PCB. Look at this PCB quality. It is very premium and has a perfect design for my project. If you want to order trial PCB for free, check the first link in the description. Now, it is time to assemble the components on the PCB. First, I collected all my ordered components one by one. Then I placed all the components one by one.
First, I soldered all the SMD components like resistors, capacitors, transistors, LED and push buttons. After soldering all this, I soldered the ESP8266 raw chip. The final stage would be soldering all the through hole components like the switch, terminal block, male female headers and INA226 sensor. Now our hardware is ready and it looks awesome. Everything is soldered properly and it looks neat and clean. However, while testing I found ESP8266 was entering into WTT reset mode. So I soldered two large value capacitors for voltage stability. The issue was fixed. I have also updated the design and Gerber file. The latest design has no issues at all. Before moving to the data visualization part, let's set up the UVDots account. Create a UVDots account or sign off using the email ID and password. Then you need to do nothing now. Just click on API credentials and copy the authentication token from here. For now, this is what we need to do for the coding part. In this coding part, we have used so many libraries. First install the INA226 DS18B20 and Popsoft client libraries. For OLED display, we are using Adafruit's GFX and SSD1306 library. From this line change the Wi-Fi credentials. Here we need to paste the UV dots authentication token that we copied earlier. That's all the changes that you need. The remaining part of the code is so simple. Please go through the code and fully understand how the data is sent over the MQTT connections. These lines are used to display the data on OLED screen. To upload the code to the ESP8266 board, connect a USB to TTL converter module to the PROC pin. From the list, Select Generic ESP8266 port and the COM port. Then click on the Upload button to upload the code. After successful code uploading, open the Serial Monitor. The Serial Monitor will show all the value 0 except the voltage and temperature. This is because currently no solar panel is connected to the port. To test the working, we need to connect a solar panel to this input terminal. The minimum voltage it requires is 7 volt and the maximum it can withstand is 36 volt. You can use a solar panel between 12 volt and up to 36 volt. Connect a solar panel to this input terminal of the board. In the load part, you may connect any load. To test the proper working of the solar panel, put the solar panel in bright sunny light. Now go to the UV dots dashboard. Here go to the device part now. Nothing appears immediately. As you refresh this page a device called ESP8266 appears automatically. Open this device and here we go. The 5 solar related parameters are locked in. Perfect job. Now to visualize the data graphically, we need to create a dashboard. Go to the dashboard and create your dashboard now. You can use cause, tank, indicator and many other available widgets here. It will take a while to decorate this dashboard. Finally, my dashboard is ready. Here, I can monitor the data in real time. Even if you log in using a mobile phone, the data visualization appears perfect. That's it from the project part today.